Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the roles that different organisms have in an ecosystem. Okay, so let's start as ever with an overview. Okay, so we're going to um, look at the three main roles that, an, um, that, that a living thing will have in an ecosystem. We talk about producers, consumers and decomposers. And we'll also spend a little bit of time talking about uh, some of the different types of consumers that we might come across in an ecosystem. Okay, so let's start by looking at producers. Okay, so producers, as you can see some examples of three different examples here, with, but you notice that there's a strong color kind of pattern here. We're looking at green, typically green. So we're talking about green plants. Okay, we've got kind of a, a normal kind of flowering kind of green plant. We've got green algae and we've got a cactus represented here. So the key thing about a producer, or that something that defines an organism as a producer, is that it must produce its own food. So that is, it doesn't rely on other organisms for a source of energy. Okay, so plants are able to produce their own food from their surroundings. Okay, and so we give them the scientific name of autotroph. Auto meaning self, um, and troph kind of referring to uh, feeding or eating. So self-eating or self-feeding. Okay, so um, we're typically looking at um, plants undergoing the process of photosynthesis. So photo referring to light and synthesis meaning building, so that they build using light. So in photosynthesis, we're talking about plants combining carbon dioxide and water from their environment using an, uh, energy from the sun to produce glucose or sugar and oxygen. So using the light from the sun to help that chemical change um, happen. Um, and then that glucose is that source of energy that helps to both keep the plant alive and then also if the plant gets eaten to keep the, the organism doing the eating alive. Now, not all producers are green plants that undergo photosynthesis because there's not every, not every place on the surface of the earth um, is exposed to sunlight, especially if we're thinking about in the ocean. You know, the sunlight only penetrates so far down beneath the surface of the ocean. And so... Um, we encounter, there are some producers that we encounter um, deep on the sea floor that use a different process to produce their own energy that we call chemosynthesis. So we're actually, by absorption of different chemicals like sulfur compounds and so on from their environment, these organisms, that they're typically only very, you know, bacteria and things like that. They're not very um, substantial, um, complex organisms, um, that they, by absorbing these chemicals, they can use them as a source of energy um, in the same way that plants use light. Okay, but so that's what defines an organism as a producer. Now let's start to look at consumers. Okay, so we've got some examples here, and you know, rabbit and a panda, and then a lioness here. Okay, that a consumer needs to consume other organisms as a source of food or a source of energy. Okay, that they can't produce it themselves. So we use the term heterotroph. Hetero meaning other or different, and then troph being feeding. So feeding on the other or something else. Okay. Um, so there's three main types of consumers that we would talk about. Okay, we talk about herbivores, we talk about carnivores, and we talk about omnivores. Okay, so a herbivore referring to, um, and we'll just click back there, herbivores referring to only eating plants or, you know, or vegetation. So your cow and your gazelle, I think that is from memory. Um, so they um, will only eat green plants as their source of energy. Okay, um, we have carnivores which only eat meat. Um, so your lion, your great white shark, okay, so they only eat meat, they don't eat plant matter. Um, and then we have animals like our piglet here and our um, man that we won't name. Um, we as human beings are omnivores and pigs are omnivores, so we're eating a mixed diet so of plants and animals, okay. But so each of these organisms, each of these types of organisms needs to eat another organism as a source of energy. Um, and, you know, some will only eat one type of organism, um, you know, one type of fish or, or, you know, only eating grass or only eating hay, um, whereas um, others will have a much more, uh, a much wider selection in there, a much more varied diet. You know, for us as human beings, we don't just eat one thing. You know, even if you're vegetarian or a vegan or something like that, um, you know, human beings, we don't just eat one type of food. We eat a range. Okay, now let's talk about the last type of organism that is called decomposers. Okay, you're seeing a, a range of different um, organisms represented in these images here. 
So decomposers perform a particularly important role in an ecosystem, that, that is to break down dead material, or break down the remains of organisms that were once alive and now aren't. Um, and so it's a form of recycling. So a way that the nutrients that are otherwise locked up inside the bodies of those organisms can be reused by, for the benefit of others. Um, so, you know, so we're taking worms, breaking down plant matter to make compost and soil that then other plants can access those nutrients. Um, you have um, different types of microorganisms that exist inside our bodies that help um, to decompose, you know, decompose the human body when we die um, to help recycle our nutrients. Because otherwise you can imagine if the, the earth would be littered with the remains of dead things that then couldn't be used for anything anymore. And so we need or, um, organisms that function as decomposers in order to recycle that material so that it's not wasted. So worms, bacteria, and fungi. All right, that finishes off our video. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.